My name is Dr. Amy Pisaside, and you are welcome to the Mom Amy Show. Well, the Bible says in the book of 3 John chapter 2, that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. But today on the show, we're going to be talking about health, wellness, and lifestyle. And to unpack that to us, we have a health, wellness, and lifestyle specialist in the person of Tanya. You're welcome to the show, Tanya. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak today to educate more people on lifestyle and wellness and how to fix our lives. Mm. So could you unpack that wellness and lifestyle to us? Tell us more about it. Certainly. Mm. All right, so everything starts off when you wake up in the morning. It's about how you're going to be eating, what decisions you are making. Okay. So it starts off with, are you eating a healthy meal or an unhealthy meal to get through the day to have all the right amount of energy mm -hmm. and just to be able to have the higher concentration levels. So it starts off with really having good decision making. Okay. So your food gives you more energy. So without eating, if you're not eating healthy foods, you're obviously going to have less energy levels and you're going to find that you just can't cope and get through your normal day mm -hmm. and the high stress and the very fast life pace that we live in. Mm -hmm. So, like you say, high, high paced lifestyle that we're leading. So a lot of people are, you know, busy. They tend to neglect their bodies. How do you, in a busy schedule, fit in health, wellness and lifestyle? How do you do that? That's a very good question. Yeah. All right, so on average, everybody has to go and buy groceries or oh, buy yeah. food for the week or for the month. So yes. first of all, it starts off with what kind of food are you buying? Are you buying more nutritional food? Yeah. How you're preparing your food? Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at, okay, your life is so busy. Yes. So would it mean that you might have to wake up 15 minutes early in the morning to prepare a much healthier breakfast or a lunch yes. for yourself and your family mm -hmm. and getting the family involved? That yeah. they're all helping to prepare the meal so mom has got more time to prepare the meals because she obviously has to run the whole family mm -hmm. or in having her own business. I was just being very busy having all those roles that she has to juggle in her life as well. Yeah, yeah. So it start, it all starts from the grocery shopping yes. to the preparation of the meal in the morning. Now talk about how long how long we cook our food. Let's talk about that. How okay. long do we cook our food? Alright, so firstly I would recommend that if people are in a hurry and they rush off to the takeaway shops and they do fast food, they've got to realize that fast food is made very, very quickly. Okay? Yes, yes. So the quicker it's been prepared and made, the chances are there's hardly any nutrition left in those foods. Just got higher calories but less nutrition. Mm -hmm. So now when you're at home, mm -hmm. you need to spend a bit more time to make more healthier meals. Mm -hmm. So for instance, instead of using um, any kind of oil, yeah. Have a look at what oil can, can actually sustain the high heat, like for instance, to use canola oil mm -hmm. or coconut oil. Because okay. coconut oil has got also healing properties, okay, mm -hmm. and it can actually sustain that very high heat power mm -hmm. that when you are cooking food. All right. Okay. So, but, but just by that, you start using a much healthier oil, so canola or coconut oil. All okay. right. Yeah. And then everything that you're cooking meat wise, you obviously to try and more grill it or stir fry instead of deep frying. Okay. okay, or overcooking because you still want to keep the nutrients in the food. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, vegetables. It's about steaming your vegetables and trying to eat as raw as possible as well. Okay. Because raw, you're not cooking all the vegetables, all the nutrition is not being depleted from the cooking process. Okay. We will come back to this cooking process. Yes. But let's talk about, because you talk about wellness and lifestyle yes. and health. So let's talk about our emotional health. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's say, for instance, um, we are very emotional, okay, yes. mm -hmm. about a certain thing in our relationship or our business, and things are not going quite the way we want it to go, and we feel that we're not coping, that maybe we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, that things are just getting too much for us, okay. and then suddenly you feel just, I need to cope, and you start looking for food yes, as a comforter, yes, yes, yes. or you become a compulsive eater without realizing it, that you're reaching out for comfort foods, okay? Yes, yes. Now, these comfort foods are usually not the most nutritional, healthy foods. It's usually in the form of more sugary, refined foods, like mm. a cake or a chocolate, but everything in moderation is okay. But mm. the higher the stress that you've got in emotions, you will start looking for comfort foods. Mm. And the more comfort foods that you eat, it becomes a habit. 
Yeah. Okay. Since you've done your lifestyle now, it becomes a habit where you automatically will go into the shop and you'll reach out for the donuts or all the, the wrong kind of foods, like the cakes and the biscuits, crisps, especially crisps, okay? Or mm. ice cream, like in the movies and the Americans, they love that big tub of ice cream when they're stressed out. Mm. So you need to be aware of the fact that you're under some form of stress or emotional state by eating the wrong foods. You're causing a lot of chemical imbalances in the body, adding more stress to your immune system, mm -hmm. and you're actually adding more stress to your metabolism, to your hormones, to just your well-being, to your mental state. Mm -hmm. So with the high levels of emotions, um, you know, different types of emotions that we get to because of stress, if you are eating healthier breakfasts and healthier lunches and meals, you'll find that you can cope better because your mind is thinking a lot more clearer because you've got all the nutrients and all the vitamins and a hopefully sufficient amount of water mm. that the body can actually cope with our day-to-day -day stresses. Mm. Now, is it possible to be stressed and not know that you're stressed? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's definite. Because mm. especially when I have a lot of clients or patients coming to see me, my first question would be is, how stressed are you? From, mm. from a level to 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, what is your number? How mm. stressed are you? Mm. And most of them will say to me, I'm not stressed. No, I'm fine. Mm. Until after we've done our consultation mm. and I get to know them a little bit better, we actually look at their stress levels. Could it be anything between 8 going right over 10? And they don't even realize it because especially with being a woman, we find that we have to juggle with so many things in our lives. We have to look after the children, get them to school, help them with their homework, prepare the meals, look after our partners, the business, etc. So we just feel we have to cope. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you feel you're not coping, you tell yourself, I can't deal with this right now. I don't have enough time. And you almost do like on a back burner, sort of like right behind the back of your mind, and you just keep on going. And you mm -hmm. might get flu, you might find your body's aching, and you just say, you, you ignore it, but your body's telling you, saying, something is not right. I need a bit of relaxation. Mm -hmm. You're actually not coping. So yeah. you need to listen to what your, your body, body is telling you. Yes. That's really interesting because when your body is aching, most people just take a painkiller and, yes. and, yes. and you know move on. So you need to listen. There's a reason why your body is aching. So that's a sign that there is stress in your body. And you're stressing somehow when your body is aching. That's correct. And it's very sad that everything is now, everything's in a box. So you always find a very quick instant replacement or a quick substitute or a quick fix. Okay, like mm. people put their foods in the microwave, in the little box, press the button, and in a minute or two, your meals are warm or cooked, but it has depleted all the energy and all the nutrients from the food. Mm. And then you look at, you got a bit of a headache. So what do you do? Yeah. You take a panada or any form of anti-inflammatory kind of tablets, okay? Mm. And people have flu, they straight away will take, you know, over-the-counter bought medication. Yeah. There are so many natural ways of eating and healing yourself. Mm. So if you're eating a lot healthier and living a healthy lifestyle with exercise, you'll find that you can cope better with stress and that your, your overall, your mental state will be so much healthier as well. Mm. Let's talk about sleep. A lot of people don't sleep. What do, you, what do you say about that? Your sleep is so important because mm. your brain needs to switch off. Because during the day, you are so busy and you have to do so many things. And at many times, your your brain has got all these little voices and all, all these little like, like inner dialogue inside your mind. And you need to do this and remember that. Or someone said this. And so much is happening. And mm. your body is releasing all these different chemicals at the same time that you're feeling emotional or you're feeling mm. happy or hurt or disappointed. Yes. So... At the end of the day, your body has gone through a hell of a lot, okay? Yes. And maybe you've exercised too, or you had a very stressful meeting, or very stressful life with the kids, or might, there might be, so they say your children might have a uh, bit of flu, or they, they're ill, and there's a lot of stress on your body. Yeah. So if you don't have a decent night's sleep, you're not giving your body time to heal and yeah. to rejuvenate, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The body needs to switch off and just repair and rebuild. Otherwise, you just on this automatic autopilot, go, 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 mm -hmm. and you will get complete burnout. Mm -hmm. You'll get, you know, a fatigue burn burnout, and you don't want to have a fatigue burnout or adrenal um, fatigue. Yeah. It puts more pressure on the body and the other vital organs. Mm. Now, it's real interesting what we were discussing earlier. We are talking about some negative emotions. And yes. Just, just tell us a bit about that. Okay. We spoke about how our emotional state can yeah. affect our well-being. Yes. So let's say, for instance, um, 
someone who's feeling very depressed and very down. Okay, so you're just focusing on that depression or that negative problem that you might have in your, your life at that moment. Yes. So you're focusing on it. So your whole body is consumed about this negativity thought process and the emotions going through your body. Mm -hmm. And every thought has a vibration frequency. Mm -hmm. So that negative energy is inside your body because when you're feeling sad or hurt, you actually mm -hmm. feel in your heart or your tummy, you can actually feel that pain. Mm -hmm. So that energy sits sure. there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that negative energy, the body starts to release certain types of, of hormones and mm -hmm. chemicals. And those chemicals get released in the body. Okay, yeah. and the body goes, oh my goodness, I see there's some stress chemicals going in the body. Let's yeah. create more fat pockets, put it into the fat pockets. Now the body's becoming more and more toxic. Mm. Okay, and creating so more there fat. is a direct relationship between bad emotions and fat. Well, it's to do with the mind and body. Yes, the mind yes. And so or mind and body, whichever you want to say. So yeah. whatever you are thinking, okay, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you are feeling. Your body sees it as real. Your mind sees it as reality. Yeah. So it goes into your body and you're actually feeling that sensation. Because when you're angry, mm -hmm. you feel that anger with inside you. So yes, it's sitting yes. in you. Yes, okay? definitely. It's yeah. releasing these chemicals and the body's going, I'm under a little bit of stress, so how do I deal with this? Okay? Yes. You don't want those chemicals to flood into the body, but mm -hmm. over time, those chemicals to start sitting in certain vital organs, okay, mm. which can cause cancer or can cause some life-threatening illnesses and diseases along the line, okay, along the yeah. way in your life process. Mm -hmm. So when you have these emotional states that are going through your body, it affects your whole way of thinking. So now you're depressed and you're negative, okay, that's mm -hmm. all you're focusing on. And the last thing you're going to think about now is having a healthy meal. Yeah. Because all you want is to have True. you know, something that's got lots of sugar, yes, that's comforting yes, you, and yes. it can become a habit. Yes. So you do it today, you do it tomorrow, you stay in this emotional depressed state, whatever form state that you are in, mm -hmm. and it becomes a habit. So let's yeah. say your depression lifts, but now you still have developed that habit of eating those very refined sugary chocolates or crisps or whatever else you've been eating. Yeah. Your comfort it's become now a habit of your life. So yeah. now we have to look at your habits. Yeah. What are you thinking? All right. So what is mm -hmm. processing through your mind? Mm -hmm. And when you have these different emotions, it mm -hmm. triggers off your habits and your actions. Mm -hmm. So if you if you are depressed all the time or negative, okay, what yeah. foods are you reaching out to? Okay. Mm -hmm. So be aware of what you're reaching out for and look for something more nutritional and more healthy. Mm -hmm. So you're actually feeding your body with the soul, you know, with, with nutrition. Yes, yes. So yeah. we need to focus and think in the right things all the time. Exactly. You have to do that because if you unhappy, look, everyone has a lot of stress in their lives. It's how you deal with it, okay? Yes. It's about how you mentally see the stress in that situation. You say to yourself, okay, this is the worst case scenario. Let me look at solutions. How can I fix it? How can mm -hmm. I change it? How can I improve it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Most of us focus on the negative and how bad it is. And we forget about all the other things around us that can yeah. actually benefit us and be grateful for that we do have. But we're so busy focusing on that one thing, we forget about everything else around us. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a, a very quick habit that we start too lazy to go to, to exercise and gym because you're just feeling so drained and tired. But after the exercise, you feel phenomenal. Mm, that's that's true. That's mm. true because um, exercise um, makes makes you feel more active, makes your blood flow right. Talk okay, about so, that okay. Yeah. So what happens is when you exercise, is your body mm. first of all you're getting cardiovascular exercise, so your heart's a muscle, so it's actually getting exercise. The blood is pumping, and as the blood's pumping, more oxygen is flooding through your blood system into yes. all the vital organs. Your mm. body's releasing endorphins. Yeah. It's releasing serotonin, which makes you happy. It's such yeah. an amazing um, release in the body, so it makes you feel great. So when you start exercising Exercise, you might not be in the mood, but afterwards you feel yes, so great. Because I realize a lot of people don't ever feel in the mood for ex exercise. Most times I wake up, I don't even feel like exercising. Yeah, of people, people don't feel in the mood, but after the exercise, feel better. So what you could do is, for instance, mm. here's a tip, is that if you're not really in the mood to exercise, mm -hmm. picture yourself after the exercise how great you feel. 
Yeah. So now you really see the end result, okay? Mm-hmm. By seeing the end result, you're going, okay, I don't feel like it right now, but I know afterwards I feel so great and I don't feel guilty. You know, now I've worked on my muscles. You know, I'm actually staying a lot younger and a lot healthier. And then it sort of almost inspires you to do that exercise. And it's only, what, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, 40 minutes every second day in your life of doing some exercise. You mm. can put that amount of time aside for yourself. Mm, mm. And later on the show, we're going to take some um, steps. You're going to show us some exercise tips. And that would be, like you say, like how many minutes in a day do you think we can do as, you know, to keep us fit? Even if you just take 15 minutes a day, okay, doing very, very basic, very simple exercise. You don't need any fancy equipment, keeping it very, very simple. So 15 minutes a day would be fantastic. You can always progress and increase as you go along. Okay. We're going to go on a short break now and we'll be back in the next segment for for more conversation. See you then. You are welcome back. This is the Mom Amy Show and we are talking to Tanya. Tanya is a lifestyle and wellness specialist and we are talking about wellness in general. You are welcome again, Tanya. Thank you very much. So tell us more about, you've been into, into business for about 12 years or more? No, much longer than that. Much I've, longer than that. I've been in my own business for 28 years, but the last 12 years of that, I had, I had basically had my own practice when it came to nutrition, okay. health and weight management. Okay, wow, that's really interesting. And we know a lot of people eat the wrong foods and so they gain weight. So just tell us a bit, just tell us, touch up a, a bit on how we can eat right. Okay. Okay. Let's start with breakfast. Yeah. Okay. You'll find that most people are on the run. They rush out of the house and they forget to take breakfast and they don't realize how important breakfast is. Mm. Because if I ask a lot of my patients that come see me about their health, yeah. they'll say to me in the afternoon they have an energy dip and they're just so tired and they can't concentrate. They're okay. feeling moody and irritable. And yeah. they, have, you know, they don't know why they have these, all these emotions. And I'll say to them, so what did you have for breakfast? And they'll go... I don't eat breakfast. I don't have time oh. for breakfast. Okay. So that <laughs> yeah. means that your blood sugar is fluctuating all over the place. So it is first of all it's essential to have a substantial healthy breakfast. Okay. And what would that be? A healthy breakfast. Okay, so a healthy breakfast would be well, you need to have some basic basis of protein. Okay. okay. Now, also oats is very, very good for you because mm. oats also has it helps with the cholesterol levels. It is helps with fiber in the body. So it's full of nutrients. It also helps to get the system running properly. And it helps with dementia. It's great for the memory, etc. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. So one day you can maybe have oats, yes. a little bit of milk, and maybe some honey and cinnamon. Okay. And then another day you can have, you've got to alternate all the time because your body gets used to a certain amount of food. You're giving it the same amount of vitamins day in and day out, which becomes an like overload. So you have to have a variety of different meals. So the next day you can maybe have two boiled eggs and a slice of whole grain bread. Mm-hmm. So and now you're getting more energy because you're eating a more well-balanced um, breakfast. You just always try and have some form of protein with your breakfast. Okay, so at every meal we must have proteins, carbohydrates and fibers or vegetables at every right. meal. So you, you get your complex um, carbohydrates, which yes. is your vegetables, which is rich in fiber as well. Okay, yes, so that's yes. very important to have some portion of that with every meal. Yeah. Your protein will be some form of meat, or it could be yogurt, it could be um, legumes, or some form of beans if you are vegetarian. Okay. okay. All right, or cheese. Mm-hmm. And then you need to have one form of grain. So you can still have your whole grains. Your whole grains. Yes. But you're going to try not to have too many grains in your diet because it also produces a lot of acid in the body. Okay. So if you want to lose weight and get a lot healthier, it's, more to, it's better to eat a lot more vegetables and fruits and lean meats. And lean meats. Yes. Okay. Now, what do you, what do you say about people? Because a lot of us take cereals for breakfast. What do you think about that? I'm probably going to get a lot of people to, um, not agreeing with me, but I absolutely am um, infuriated when people have 
all these cereal boxes with all these like extra chocolates in and extra sugar coats and they give it to their children and I think they're giving their children a wonderful breakfast. They're off to school, they're hyperactive, the poor teachers probably can't even cope with them because of all that extra sugar yeah. that has been released inside their bloodstream making them just more hyperactive and energetic. Yeah. Um, I personally feel that that is a quick fix, that's another box meal. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, it might be some vitamins and a little bit of nutrients in there, but it's not substantial enough to help you get through the day of all those studies, all those stresses, your normal day that you need to get through. So rather to have something more substantial, like a poached egg or have some oats, have some whole grain with some cheese and tomato on some lettuce. So it's more about what you're eating. And I know that we're in a rush, so we wouldn't mm -hmm. have a quick fix. So it's not about quick yeah, fix because gradually day after day eating all these sugary cereals for breakfast the chances are you can become diabetic well how about porridge okay if you don't have a porridge let's look at oats mm -hmm. okay because oats yeah. has got your roughage it's got your fiber it's got lots of vitamins in there mm -hmm. and that is a lot more substantial and healthy a lot healthier than having any other of those box cereals that you get how about wheat picks wheat picks wheat picks is also high in grains so Look, wheat picks is also very healthy. There's nothing wrong with wheat picks, okay? okay. It's just that I want you to alternate every day and have okay. something a little okay. bit more different. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Now, a lot of people think eating healthy is expensive. Talk about it. Okay. So let's let's have a look. Quite a few of my clients and my patients, they tell me how three, four times a week they stop on their way home to some fast food vendor and they've got a children, they've got three children and mm -hmm. husband and wife so it's a family of five. So yeah. they drive in and they buy some takeaways, it's hamburgers, chips, whatever it is, okay? Yeah. They're spending an average of about 150 Rand, maybe 200 Rand, okay? okay? If you had to take that 200 Rand and split it, so you go into to your supermarket, you buy a whole chicken, oh. you buy three different types of vegetables, you'll still have some money left to buy coconut oil. Mm. So by cooking with coconut oil, okay, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a lot more healthier. And because it's natural, mm -hmm. it, the, it, your body is getting a lot more nutrients and healing properties from the coconut. And coconut oil can sustain that very, very high heat when you're actually in the cooking process. So there's no chemical change taking place. It's mm -hmm. still natural and your body can digest and absorb it. So now with that 150 rand now that you spend going to the supermarket, you can actually feed a family of five with a nice substantial meal. And believe me, tomorrow morning when the children wake up or you wake up, you feel awake <laughs> and you've got energy, okay? If you had taken the family out that night before and eaten the takeaways, mm -hmm. how would you felt the next morning when you wake up? Feeling a bit tired, a bit of aches and pains, acid mm -hmm. in your joints, you don't really feel wonderful. You'll feel a difference in your body by eating different foods. Mm, that's true. Because most times when I take fast foods, I don't even feel like I've eaten at all. But yes, I've eaten. Yeah. Because it's empty calories. Yeah. I mean, sorry, it's totally empty nutrition, mm -hmm. but it's very high in calories. So that there's no nutrition absorption in, again taking place in the body because there's hardly any nutrients in there. It's been over fried or it's been over processed or there's man made chemicals and colorants and flavorants in there to enhance the flavor. So you almost become addicted to it. So you eat all this food, but you've got no nutrition. So we don't. Can we take fast food like once in a while? Yes, everything in moderation. In moderation. Yes. Chocolates? Yes. In moderation. In moderation. Okay. Just don't become a habit. And if you are, you see you're developing a habit every day you're buying crisps and a chocolate, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Okay. You know, what, what emotionally is triggering me off? Why am I looking for these comfort foods? Is it a habit? Let me change the habit now before it becomes so part of me I'm not even used to doing it. I mean, okay. I'm going to realize I'm doing it. Okay, I, I, I'm, I go around in the day, I forget to pack a lunch, I get hungry, I pop into a supermarket. What can I get? What's healthy? All right, first thing, most um, supermarkets have ready-made salads. Okay. Okay, so, and a lot of them have ready-cooked chickens. Okay. They have chicken pieces or they have some form of meat that's really been cooked. So rather take the salad and maybe buy a little piece of chicken, break the chicken up, throw it into the salad and toss it and you, you've, got all, you've got your full meal all combined in one. What if I don't have the money for that? You don't have the money. Okay, so if you were... I, I mean, let's say a, a sorry, packet of Lay's is like maybe four or five rand. <laughs> I know chicken pieces would be more expensive. What? Okay, so if you're going to buy crisps... Okay, mm -hmm. you'll find that you'll be hungry within half an hour. 
Okay. So you'd have to go back and go buy more food because okay. you are still hungry. So rather budget accordingly to what you can afford daily. So rather go and buy yourself, let's say, some whole wheat bread, a whole wheat loaf, whole grain bread, that's what's a low GI. Yeah. And then have a look at what you can add on there. Either get some cheese, if you mm -hmm. buy a slab of cheese, that cheese will last you for the next few days or a few more meals, mm. and maybe a tomato. So you've got something a bit more um, healthier. Or mm. if you do buy a piece of chicken, you can break that chicken up and put it onto a whole grain roll or two slices of whole grain bread. Because now you are feeding your body with nutrition. Okay. Okay. So what about um, is what? How? What's um, the which one is better, whole grain bread or white bread or should we not eat white bread at all? If I had my 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 <laughs> bowl, I would ban white bread completely. Okay? okay. I would rather that you have a whole grain form of bread mm -hmm. because it's still in a much more natural state. It hasn't been over processed. Okay. Now, um, you know, a lot of people don't, do we cook with olive oil? Okay, good question. Yeah. Let's have a look at all the different cold pressed oils and different types of oils that we get. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, most oils, um, most popular oil on the shelf today is the sunflower oil. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And a lot of um, fast food um, shops, they keep reusing that oil over and over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I know they would probably would say that they don't, but I'm sure that there are a few people that can admit that they do do that to save costs in the long run. Mm -hmm. And by overheating that oil over and over, that's different chemical changes that have taken place with that high heat is so toxic for our bodies. Okay. Yeah. So what do we cook with? So. By cooking with coconut oil, which I mentioned earlier, that helps to, it, it still stays in an organic, natural way once it's been heated. Can I, does that mean I can make my stews with coconut oil? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And even canola oil. Canola oh, oil no. can also take mm -hmm. excessive heat. Okay. Then you're looking at your olive oils, your avocado oils, you get your grapeseed oils. Those are for toppings. So you can sprinkle it over your food or over your salads, keeping completely natural state, not to be heated. Okay, okay. That, that's real good. So we, we don't cook with our olive oils, we don't cook with our avocado oils, we don't cook no. with our... No, because you, because it's it's such a natural oil. Okay, the minute that you are heating it, you're losing all the nutrients of that oil, and that chemical change now becomes toxic. Okay. You've lost all that nutritional value. So okay. raw is better. Natural okay. state. Natural state. Yes. And, and what do you think about people? Some people reuse their oils. Um, deadly. It, it is so unhealthy because it is so full of toxins. Mm -hmm. It's it's so toxic. So you're actually just blocking your arteries. This is one of the reasons why you're going to get, you're going to get cholesterol. You're going to find you just don't have that energy anymore and the body's aching and pain because you're literally just putting toxic poison inside the body. So I fry my chicken. I, I must throw my oil away. First of all, you don't believe in frying chicken. <laughs> No, <laughs> rather grill it. <laughs> rather grilled chicken. Yeah, rather grill it or pot roast it. Okay. Um, or you can stir fry it. But okay. um, try not to fry it. If you're going to fry it, how are you frying it? With a little bit of oil, a little with a lid oil. on top, so that it's just simmering in that heat and a little bit of oil and its own natural juices. That is fine. Okay. Okay, let's talk about a menu for a whole day. What can I eat to stay healthy for a whole day? Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, a lot of people are not eating enough, besides the fact they're not eating the right foods. Yes. You need to have three main meals mm -hmm. and two smaller meals in between. Mm -hmm. All right, so three main, two small, which makes five meals, okay? Mm -hmm. That is to keep your blood sugar consistent in the body. Okay. Because if you are skipping meals mm -hmm. or eating the wrong food, you'll find that your blood, um, blood sugar levels can actually fluctuate, and then the body has to produce more insulin. The heart is working a lot harder. You put the body in a lot of stress. If that continues, you can become diabetic. So okay. let's, and also you'll start picking up weight, because every time your body's producing insulin, it's a fat-making hormone. So the body's just producing more more and more insulin, you're getting fatter and fatter and fatter, and you don't even know why. So mm -hmm. let's start off with the basics. So you have three main meals. Okay. And try and eat this more or less the same time every day. So if you have breakfast every day at 6 in the morning, try and stick to that 6 o'clock every day, every morning for breakfast. Okay. Lunchtime the same, 1 o'clock the same time, every day the same every day. time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a substantial breakfast, which we spoke about just now, mm -hmm. let's say you're going to have a small bowl of oats and maybe a boiled egg or a slice of whole grain toast with some cheese, grated cheese over. So it's giving your protein and your grain your roughage. Okay. okay. 
for lunch. What where's the the vegetable? Okay. So Let's say let's go back to that. So you can have a little bowl of oats. Okay. okay. You can have a slice of whole grain um, toast. Okay. And you can always put a little bit of tomato over it. Sprinkle some spring onions, uh, maybe a bit of a lettuce leaf. Cut up all nice and small, and then maybe just put um, some cheese over that as well. And you can be creative. You can put quite a bit of whatever vegetables you got left over or salad. Add it over to your, your slice of, of toast. Okay. And then for lunchtime, you want to continue having your vegetables. Mm -hmm. You need to eat at least between three and five vegetables a day. Okay. So at lunchtime, you need to have three to four or five vegetables, like mm -hmm. a salad, a green salad with vegetables in. Yeah. And maybe a fillet, a fillet chicken cut up inside there, so you can toss it together. So now you've got your your salad that has got your meat in as well. Okay. Okay. And then for dinner, you can do what we spoke about too, is maybe a stir fry. Mm -hmm. So you can use some beef strips, you mm -hmm. can do your beans, you can do some red and yellow peppers, some purple onion, and you can actually all just stir fry that very lightly in your coconut oil, mm -hmm. and maybe have some balsamic rice. Okay. And the snacks in between? Snacks in between. So snacks in between also need to be some form of protein. Okay, as well as your, so that, that balance again, a bit of protein, a little bit of your carbohydrates and your, okay. your grains. So let's say for your snack at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock-ish, okay, you mm -hmm. could have some nuts. You can have some almond nuts, macadamia nuts, some mixed nuts, and maybe a plain yogurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, at 3 o'clock-ish, 4 o'clock, just before you're on your way home and before you're going to have you cook your dinner and everything, just to keep your blood sugar consistent, okay, you could have something like a fruit. A fruit, yeah. You can have a fruit or you can have a half a quarter tub, let's say a quarter tub of cottage cheese and maybe provita biscuit. Okay. Um, I just, you know, a lot of people argue that there's no time to prepare all these things. What do, what do they do? Okay, let's get back to our lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. So, you have to decide how important are you to yourself? Do you really love yourself enough to look after yourself? So that means you might have to make some changes. So mm -hmm. it means you might have to, the evening before, when you are making your dinner, to prepare your lunch before the time and to actually start packing your lunch and your breakfast already. So now you're becoming more organized, you're more structured, and you're taking care of your needs and your family's needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the morning too, it might be a lot of rush with the children running around, getting yeah. ready, hubby's, you know, he wants his food, you're trying to do your food. So get the family involved to all contribute towards time. Okay. Everybody does a little extra. Okay. You wake up maybe 15 minutes earlier to prepare a little bit of a healthier lunch. Yeah. So yeah. it's about your decisions your, that you're making because your decisions can actually make a much more improvement in your life and your health by making the right decisions, by waking up a little earlier, by actually preparing meals that are more healthy. Okay. And you are setting example to your children as well. 